Hey, welcome back to the second part of this video series. My name is Benjamin Schumann, and in this video we want to explore the model hierarchy that we use to translate an AnyLogic network into a purely agent-based representation. So let's get started and <clears throat> look at normal AnyLogic networks first. This is how I got started myself with this. Um, AnyLogic networks are made up out of four components. Uh, you can see them in the space market library here. There are path and then there are three type of nodes. We'll ignore attractors so they don't really mean anything in a network context. And a pallet rack is also not part of a network. So it's basically paths and nodes, three types of nodes. The nodes are rectangular nodes, point nodes and polygonal nodes, <clears throat> just varying in the spatial representation. From a pathfinding perspective, they don't actually make any difference, but in our case, we want to represent everything like it is here. So what I thought was, all right, why don't I duplicate the object-oriented structure of what AnyLogic did? So why don't I check out how rectangular nodes are actually defined? Let's start with those. And what you do is you basically go into the AnyLogic Java doc help or if you take it from scratch, you go to anylogic.help, click on the API reference. That's what gets you the juicy technical detail. And then you just search for rectangular node. And without a space, because this is the actual Java object rectangular node. And you get a lot of detail. I do recommend you learn how to read those Java doc documents because it gives you a lot of interesting insights. For example, I can see here that the rectangular node object or Java class is inheriting properties from what's called an area node class, a node which itself then inherits stuff from a node class, which itself inherits stuff from a network mapper class. And I can just click on those things and see what they are doing. Um, sometimes you get a little description here as well, what these are for. But this was already a good starting point for me to learn how do the different network objects interact with each other. If I check out point node, which is a point node, I can see that it is using, or it's embedded in the same kind of hierarchy. Point node inherits from node, which inherits from network markup element. And polygonal node is the same thing. So you can check that out yourself. There we go. So I thought, all right, if any logic decided to use this structure, it's probably a good idea if I duplicate this structure myself, gives me the highest level of flexibility. So in our model, what we do is, first of all, I typically do not put actual model stuff into main anymore. I usually create a model agent has all sorts of advantages and then just instantiate that once on main, but that's a different topic. We'll not go into that today. Now in my model, I have the actual network like we've seen before, and I can draw this any way I like. But what I also have are different populations, four of them, and they do correspond to the four types of network elements that exists. I have an agent population of paths, point nodes, rectangular nodes, and polygonal nodes. But what are these actually? Well, First of all, let's start again with a rectangular node. The population is made up of a underscore rectangular node agents that I created myself. And it's a fairly simple little agent type. Essentially, it has a visual representation of our rectangular node, which is a rectangle. It's not a rectangular node. It is a visual representation. So I'm using things from the presentation library, a rectangle in this case. And it has some on-click methods. So when you run the model and hover over it, you can actually click your node. Now in this video, we won't go into details of how I set this up and how it works functionally. We'll want to explore the structure of the model. A rectangular node has a couple of properties that are specific to rectangular nodes. For example, it links to the actual rectangular node from the network. So this is an actual network rectangular node. It has a couple of functions and it is embedded in model, which itself is embedded in main, as we've seen. Now, rectangular node itself, you see these grayed out things here actually inherits from other things. And you might start to realize 
how I set things up. Rectangular node itself extends or inherits from a area node, which is exactly what we see for rectangular nodes and the other ones they also inherit from area node. In our case, from a underscore area node, I create an agent type that is equivalent to area node. And this agent type now is an actual abstract agent type, meaning it's a parent agent class, but it should not actually ever be instantiated yourself. Again, we don't go into Java details here, but it's a good way to flag that. So rectangular nodes can be instantiated they inherit from a underscore area node, which itself actually has no real properties yet. But it allows you to give your area node agents, everybody who inherits from area node, properties in the future. So a rectangular node inherits from area node, polygonal node also inherits from area node. So these two have that in common because they're nodes that have an area. If we look into point node, similar setup, but you'll see point node does not inherit from area node because it's just a point. It does not have area capabilities. Apart from that, polygonal node, rectangular node, they're all kind of similar. They have these um, parameters that link them to their actual network object. A couple of functions that we'll check out later. But rectangular node and polygonal node have this additional area node agent type in the middle. And then I check out the API docs again and I see area nodes in any logic world inherit from this node class. So I thought it's a good idea to do that as well and we have an a underscore node agent type. Again, it is abstract and our area node inherits from a underscore node as well as our point node, because they're all nodes. And all nodes in this case have one thing in common, they have the ability to click on something. So I put the f on click method into node, and this is doing some, some stuff when you click it. We'll check those code later. And then a node itself under, uh, inherits from a underscore network markup element which is what we have in reality as well. And a network markup element is basically anything that can be in a network that makes some markups, that gives it some spatial capabilities. So a node inherits from that, but also a path inherits from that because a path is also a network markup element. But a path is not a node and a path is not an area node, so that's why it inherits indirectly from a network markup element. Again, if you check out the API, you'll see exactly the same setup. So it, the path inherits from network markup element. So I wasn't uh, super clever or anything. I just understand how Java docs work. And I trust that any logic has made some good design decisions with this uh, hierarchy. And I simply duplicate it and it works really well. Because now in my network markup element, I can give all network agents things that they all share. So in our world, each network markup element has a name, just a simple string. So rectangular nodes, polygonal nodes, points and paths have a name always. And they have these functions as well to set an animation, to set a color or to be able to click on something. So this is the hierarchy. If you, if you visualize it, it is basically a network markup element at the top, an abstract agent type, um, a path inherits from it directly, a node inherits from it directly. Um, then a area node inherits from a node, polygonal node, rectangular node inherit from area node, and point node inherits from node. It's a shame that any logic doesn't let you visualize um, inheritance not hierarchies, but you can easily draw that yourself or you get it into your head. You get used to it quite quickly. All right, so this is the hierarchy of the model. If we go back to our model agent, you'll see again that we have these populations. And what I do at the start of the model, and we'll see that in the next video, is to 
<coughs> sorry, to create these agents and basically duplicate this network. So we'll have um, path agents, point node agents, and rectangular polygonal agents. So if we start our model, let me stop the right one. And then we go into the model agent itself at runtime. You know, you can cheat and basically go here, click on model, go there. You see the um, populations. For this network, we have 32 path agents. We have 15 point nodes, 13 rectangular nodes, and so on. And if you click on, you know, if you go into an individual one, just double click on the population. This is what a polygonal node will actually look like polygonal node agent and same you could do with path and so on the only other thing in the hierarchy really is one truck agent it's a simple toy agent that is being used to navigate through our agent based network in the end um, again well, obviously hopefully this is you know you would adjust this you would use your own agents for this kind of stuff it's just an example thing and this is a single agent so no population so this is the hierarchy, this is the um, the setup, the structural setup of the model. I hope that makes sense. In the next videos, we will actually start looking into how do I instantiate those agents based on translating the network. Some sweet little magic there, so check it out. Thanks a lot.